Hi, welcome to iTeach3D channel on YouTube. My name is Brad, and tonight we're going to learn in the UDK um, how to use the Vertex Paint tool. And uh, that means we're going to go into uh, Mesh Paint mode. And to start off, I've got a couple textures that I um, made in advance. So let's take a look at those. And also, I've got a couple um, uh, got a couple static meshes that we're going to use as well. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to open up the content browser because we've got to create a material. So I'm simply going to right click in any of the blank workspace here and say new material. So my material uh, comes up right here. I'm going to save it as a package name. I'll just call it paint package and because uh, this is the paint package I'm going to use and I'll call it paint material paint material and we'll say OK. So that allows me to uh, brings up the material editor and then I can create my material from it. Now also uh, before I can start using textures uh, on this new material I've got to bring them into the content browser so I don't even have to use the import button down here anymore I can just come over here and I can simply drag them from my Windows Explorer. So I kinda like all of these I'm going to uh, click and drag over all of them uh, we're not going to use the mask this time so I'm going to deselect the mask and we're not going to use the box three segments so I'll just drag the other ones over when I drag them over it's asking uh, if everything here is fine and it looks to me good so I'm just going to say OK to all. It'll cycle through all uh, all the textures that I brought in. I'm also getting a, a incompatible FBX version message because I was using 3ds Max 2014 uh, to uh, to export those um, those static mesh models and so I'm actually using a newer version of Max than what they're uh, expecting for an import so I'll just say OK here and OK here and that's good that was for both of those boxes so it'll stop uh, it'll be finished importing in just a moment so alright so <clears throat> once it finishes importing you can see the textures are in here I also brought in some normal maps that I created now the textures I just took uh, a picture of my house and uh, and cut that brick down to 10, 1024 by 1024 and then went into Photoshop using the NVIDIA normal mapper and just made a normal map of it and I did the same thing I took a picture of the concrete driveway and then uh, using the NVIDIA normal mapper in Photoshop I just made a a normal map of it so that's what it looks like alright so let's go in and finish creating this material I am going to continue using the content browser though so I'm gonna pull it off to the side just a little bit uh, I want you still to be able to see it for the purposes of recording I've got a, a smaller recording screen so I'll try and make sure you get to see everything so I'd like to bring those materials in here we'll start off first of all by bringing in the brick material and uh, in order to paint it on we're going to have to use the um, the parameter texture so uh, I have it selected in my content browser as you can see here it's selected what I'll do next is I'm going to right click and I'll choose parameters and then we're going to use this new texture sample parameter 2D I'll click on that brings it up here and I'm going to rename it I like to put my initials in there so I know it's a unique name and then I'll just say what it is BJS brick it shortens it now let's bring up also and I'm going to hold control in order to move that up I'll also bring in the concrete material that I had concrete driveway I'll go back into the material editor once again right click go into parameters and then new texture sample parameter 2D when that comes up also here I'm going to shorten the name call it BJS concrete and it shortens it and brings it up there okay I'm going to hold control and alt to marquee select those two and drag them back just a little bit and I've got to get these two combined together and put them into the diffuse channel in order to do that we're going to use the linear interpolation or lerp so I hold the L on my keyboard and click and it brings up the linear interpolation or lerp I'll put the um, brick uh, RGB channel into A channel and then the RGB channel of my concrete into the B channel and right now we don't have anything in the alpha channel uh, but we are going to need it because if I hook the output channel from the lerp into the diffuse 
it is going to give me a, an error message here where it says uh, I don't have anything in my input alpha right there. So let's go ahead and put something in there. Uh, in order to paint the vertex, I'm going to need a vertex color. Uh, so an expression. So let's bring up a vertex color expression. I'm going to open up my expressions for that window material expressions and I can just type in the word color and there it is vertex color. I'll just simply drag it over into my scene. I can close this and reposition it just a little bit and I've got three different colors red green and blue channels here that I can use and uh, and what I'll do is um, the green channel actually has the most information on it. Uh, the red channel has the second most information and the blue channel has the least amount of information. It's, uh, it's lossy, meaning uh, we're going to lose some information on there. So anyway, I'm going to take the green channel simply because it is the it does have the most information coming through that channel right there. So I'll take the green channel and hook it up to my alpha channel right here in the LERP. And then you can see that my concrete material shows up right here. I'll zoom in just a little bit. So whatever is in the B channel, whatever texture you've put into the B channel, channel, that's the one that's going to show up first on top. This is fine for what we're doing today and uh, now I'm going to click and save on uh, my material and we'll close this and what we'll do is uh, you can see here my material the paint material that we created is now uh, it now shows up the concrete there but we don't see the brick yet uh, that's coming up. I'm gonna move this over just a little bit and actually what I'd like to do is you can see there's the default block let's now bring in we've got box one segment and box ten segments what this is is in 3ds max I went ahead and modeled just two simple boxes one of them is only one segment which means there are twelve triangles here which means there's only a vertex at each corner this other one this box with ten segments each that means that there are ten segments so there are going um, across and also going down which means that there are twelve hundred triangles so there's a whole lot more vertices uh, in this box than there are in this box so let's see how that makes a difference when we're painting vertex colors so I'm gonna grab the box one first and just drag it into my scene here and then we'll take the um, box ten segment and let's drag that one over here and uh, and I'd like to actually put this material onto both of those. So the material we just made, I'm going to simply take it and drag it onto both of them. Drag it there, drag it here. And now I can close uh, this, but I'd like to open up my material. So let's, uh, oh, we're not opening that up yet. I'll close this. All right, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see what's going on. All right, keep in mind this is my 10 segment uh, box right here and let's move it back just a little bit so you can see we'll match them up alright so what I'd really like to do is go ahead and paint some of the bricks to show through here so with this static mesh selected I'm going to click on my mesh paint mode that allows us to do vertex painting so I'll put it here kinda goes off the screen a little bit sorry about that make sure that we're on vertices we're also painting and uh, because I went with the green channel, the green channel is going to paint concrete. The red and the blue channels will paint the brick. So I'm also going to pull up my strength here. So I'm just going to increase the strength to 1.0 so that you can see it working. And I'm going to grab this and pull it all the way over to 100% blue. Now I'll simply hold my control key and wherever I paint, you'll see that the brick comes through. Now I can also, it'll do the same thing if I simply move it over to the red channel over there and it'll paint more brick on there. And if I move it to the green channel, because that's the one that is uh, on the concrete right there, I can paint some concrete back into it if I wanted to. So, and again, I'm holding the control key in order to get this, uh, in order to paint all this. So that's pretty cool. You can even see if we back out just a little bit here and move over and you can see that I can even go over, let me go to full blue again, holding control. I can even paint around the corner, around the edges, so it even goes around the corner there. So it gives me a nice steady paint stream of paint uh, for whatever texture I've got there. You can even go around the top if I wanted to. If I wanted to come up there and you'll see up top there that it also paints. Kind of neat. Let's take a look now over here at, uh, at the one segment box. There it is. And uh, before I can select this I need to close mesh paint mode, select my one segment box. 
and then get back into mesh paint mode so I can paint the vertices. Now I'm going back into the blue, 100% blue. I'm holding control and I'm clicking and dragging. Nothing's happening here in the center and that's because, remember, there are only vertices at each of the corners. This is a one segment box. So you're not really going to see anything at all. There's nothing to paint. But at, watch what happens now when I paint a corner. So I'm going to go up, I'm going to go up, and boom, I painted the corner and this whole quadrant here turned brick. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm go get to the corner. Watch what happens when I go to this corner. Boom. And then this final corner right there. So I painted all four vertices here and sure enough uh, they all turn paint. If I'd like to go back, remember we're on the green channel, so I'm going to hold control and as I there. So I've got brick at the top and I've got some concrete at the bottom and they kind of blend together in between. So that's the difference between between using a um, between using a higher vertex model. Let me close this. That's the difference between using a higher vertex model model, model which is this one, where it allows me to a finer painting surface, and uh, or one which is a more low poly model. So, but again, the trade off here is I've got 12 triangles for the low one um, versus 1,200 triangles here on the high poly one. So you just have to determine, you know, where, where's the balance here? Do I need more vertices, less vertices? Do I need to be able to paint more? Or uh, am I okay with painting less vertices? So anyway, hope you learned something. Uh, thanks for joining me. Oh, you know what? We're not done yet. Let's do this. Um, I'm looking at this, and uh, it looks like a pretty good texture right there. Let's also go to the other side so we can see. Uh, I'm going to paint some of this. And so we'll select the 10 and uh, what I'd really like to do is we didn't put a normal map in there yet so let's uh, let's put a normal map in there let me paint some of this so you can see in the light here it looks a little a little better let's come over to this one so I'll close this select the static mesh open mesh paint mode again go to my blue channel and I'll just paint these two right there and then close it alright so something that we did not do yet is that um, let's open up our content browser let's open up the material that we just created and I've got those two normal maps in there so I'd like to bring those in so I'm going to select the normal map here I also need to bring those in as parameter 2D so I'll come into here right click parameters and parameter texture sample parameter 2D and once again I'll rename this BJS uh, concrete normal alright and then we'll pull that down just a little bit down here and then also let's bring in the um, let's bring in the brick normal as well so I will right click up here parameters texture sample parameter 2D and let's rename this as well BJS uh, brick normal all right, so that shortens it. We can bring these together a little bit here. And just like we did for this one, having the lerp, we also need a lerp here. I'm going to select those, bring them back. So I'm going to hold the L, click, brings up my lerp, and reposition it. Now I'm going to take the brick normal. I'll take the RGB channel here, put it in the A channel, take my concrete normal, put it in the B channel, and then um, and then what I'll need to do is uh, I still need a vertex color but because I already have one here we can use this same one for this one as well I'll just it's already in there so let's save some time space and effort and I'm going to grab the green channel throw it into my alpha channel there and now let's see what happens when I connect the lerp to the normal uh, to the normal channel right here on the material I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You ought to see this thing uh, change dramatically because of the bump. So let's see, or the normal. All right, there. So it raised the surface up quite a bit. Um, so they get, we get, wow, lots of contrast in there. So that looks really good. Let's save this by clicking the green check mark. Once it's saved, I can close this. I can close this. And now you'll notice a huge difference. Um, you can see a lot better shadows in there. Look at how the, the light 
uh, shines there and it really makes some deep contrast um, some surface there it looks really bumpy on there and even here in the kind of in the shadows looks really bumpy uh, but that brick shows up really great in there you can just see the contrast in there so let's see what it looks like on this side uh, as well so yep and even on the dark side you can tell that the the um, just the grooves are much deeper in there so so anyway so uh, that's making uh, a material that we can use to paint with and and uh, how to paint and how to easily put meshes here and the difference between using a model with less vertices and a model with more vertices hope you've learned something and uh, thanks my name is Brad and this is the I teach 3d channel thanks a lot for watching